Hello, New York Giants fans, and welcome to the Valentine's Views podcast here on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Let's talk about uh, New York Giants training camp and week two of New York Giants training camp. Believe it or not, week two already begins on Monday at Quest Diagnostics Training Center. Really, it's the first full week. Giants have had four practices at this point, including Sunday's work at uh, at Quest, intensity really ramps up this week with padded practices, and, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Before we get deep into that, just uh, wanted to give a shout out on Friday. Nick Filato of Big Blue View joined me at uh, at camp. That is the first time since I have been credentialed for training camp in 2008, believe it or not, and then fully credentialed by the Giants a few years after that. First time Big Blue View has ever been allowed to have more than one person attending a training camp practice. So a uh, pretty cool moment for us. Was really, really happy to have Nick at camp. Nick, under, you know, you guys know uh, from, from listening to Nick's uh Nick's show, Big Blue Banter with, with Dan Schneier, and of course from his work at Big Blue View, you know, here on the YouTube channel and his writing at Big Blue View. You guys know how knowledgeable Nick is, how much he knows, how much value he can add to our practice reports and to our coverage of training camp and, and perhaps even into the season. So, you know, whenever we can get Nick there, that will be a, a fantastic thing. And, and just wanted to mention that because that's kind of a big moment for us at Big Blue View to be able to get a, a second person credentialed to, uh, to help cover the New York Giants. All right, let's talk about, uh, about training camp and about the, the upcoming week. Giants will practice on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Expect three of those practices to be fully padded practices, probably Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. That's not official. I'm expecting you know Monday to be fully padded. Uh, those dates are not official, like I said, but that is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting those three days to be padded practices. We'll see. Uh, you know that we'll see exactly what the Giants do, but uh, but intensity will ratchet up. We'll get a really good look at what the offensive line looks like, what the defensive line looks like. We'll really start to see um, you know, whether or not the Giants can protect Daniel Jones, whether they can open some holes in the running game. We'll really begin to see if the Giants have enough in terms of down linemen uh, next to uh, Dexter Lawrence, they've been using veteran Raheem Nunez Roches and third-year man Ryder Anderson, who who played a, a good bit as a rookie two years ago, but ended up spending last year on the practice squad after being injured early in training camp. So we'll see if they have enough there. We'll see if anybody steps up on the defensive line to uh, to really join that rotation. But that, of course, is really the the interesting part, the cool part. Once we get to to padded practices, you just can't tell a whole lot about offensive line play, defensive line play when these guys are in shorts and t-shirts, because there just isn't. <coughs> excuse me, there isn't the hitting, there isn't the physicality. There have to be times when, because they're not wearing pads. You know, guys don't do things that they might ordinarily do, uh, you know, to, to make a block or to defeat a block. You know, things they they would do in full pads that they don't do, you know, without the pads on. So should get some some good information, some good action this week at Giants training camp. I'm going to try to be there for those four practices should be there for at least three. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how many we can get Nick to as well. So, but please, you know, look forward to that at BigBlueView.com. Look forward to all of our training camp coverage. Look forward to what we uh, 
to what we post here on YouTube as well as we try to keep you guys uh, up to date on everything going on at training camp and uh, everything going on with your New York Giants. Wanted to mention that I did a, a, a stock up, stock down at Big Blue View on Friday afternoon after the first three days of, of training camp. Thought that that was a good time to uh, to put something like that together, a little early impressions uh, of camp with uh, with Saturday having been an off day. I hope you guys, uh, if you haven't read that yet, I hope you guys will take a few minutes to go back and read that from uh, from Friday's Big Blue View. You can still find that on our front page. So please do that if you haven't done that already. Um, you know, lots of lots of guys to talk about. But I think I want to talk about Jermaine Illuminor. Um, I'm so impressed by Illuminor. And it's it's not because he's a good player. Um, it he's you know, he's an eight-year veteran, he's never been an all pro, he's never gone to a Pro Bowl. But I, I was so impressed all offseason, just after he signed with the Giants as a free agent, by his excitement to be to be a giant that he posted consistently on, uh, on social media. But I'm so impressed by this guy's attitude, by his work ethic, by his willingness to do whatever he's asked to do. Um, you know, this is a guy who worked all off season at left guard after playing two years of right tackle in Las Vegas. The guy who's played every position on the offensive line as an NFL player, except center, had his best two years probably playing right tackle for the Raiders the last couple of seasons with uh, with Carm Brasillo as the offensive line coach. Brasillo, of course, now with the Giants and, and a big part of the reason Illuminor is here as well. On day one of training camp, Illuminor found out that with Evan Neal on the pup list, the Giants would move him to right tackle from left guard where he worked all spring and where he spent all summer, um, you know, doing technique work to, to be ready for training camp. Moved out there without a hitch, <coughs> without a complaint, no big deal. You know, said he took a, took a few minutes before practice to, to, to go over his technique. He said it won't be a problem. You know, he's played there a lot. I just, I love the attitude. I love the, I don't care where I play. Doesn't matter. Just put me out there on the field. I love the fact that when he got hurt on Wednesday, when he took a shoulder in the ribs from Dexter Lawrence, went down on the field, said, uh, said, I thought I was dead because, you know, jokingly said, I thought I was dead, um, was taken off the field, was taken inside, thought perhaps that uh, that Illuminor had had broken some ribs, had broke, you know, the way he was holding his arm, thought maybe he had broken his arm. Uh, turns out that he just had some bruised ribs, short-term injury, he'll be fine. Um, Giants didn't expect him to, to practice on Thursday or Friday. Um, said, you know, maybe he would he would be over on the side doing some individual work, but Illuminor insisted on practicing both of those days. On Thursday, he did the individual work. He did the walkthrough work. Um, you know, the what what you would call the install work. It's basically forcing his way onto the field. On Friday, again, Brian Dable told us that Illuminor would not do the team periods, wouldn't do 11 on 11. And yet there he was out there taking a heavy share of the first team reps during 11 on 11 in first team periods in, in, uh, in the, in the team periods. <clears throat> and again, I love it. I love the fact that, you know, he said he's never missed a practice in his eight year career in terms of a training camp practice said he was determined not to miss one now. And, and I love that attitude because that's toughness, that's leadership, that's something teammates notice, and that's something that has to rub off on teammates. That's something that that has to push teammates to be better, to get out on the field, 
to do more, maybe to practice when they don't feel great. Um, and I just, I think that, that that attitude has to be contagious and, and, and I love it. I love what we've seen from the guy so far. Um, I've said this before I've written this. I don't know what's going to happen with Evan Neal. He's still on the pup list. I think that each day that goes by makes it more and more difficult to think that Evan Neal is going to be, you know, part of the Giants starting lineup on offense in 2024. I have written and I really truly believe that the Giants moving Illuminor to right tackle from left guard to start training camp is something they would not have done unless they unless they looked at it as a long-term move there I, I don't believe that they're going to move Jermaine Illuminor to right tackle and then suddenly just slide him back to left guard when when Evan Neal comes back to practice to me if they're to me that would be wasted time wasted reps um you know wasted a wasted opportunity to build continuity for Illuminor in between, you know, John Michael Schmitz at center and Andrew Thomas at left guard. I truly believe that Jermaine Illuminor is your starting right tackle for the Giants week one against the Minnesota Vikings. Who the left guard is, maybe it's Aaron Stinney, maybe it's Evan Neal, maybe it's somebody who's not on the roster yet, like Greg Van Roten or Justin Pugh. Or, or another veteran free agent, I don't know. But I truly believe at this point that the move of Illuminor to right tackle is really the end of us seeing Evan Neal as the regular right tackle for the Giants. All right, just, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize for this for this cough. I seem to have had it for forever lately, in you know, the last uh, couple of months. And it stubbornly just does not want to go away. I just wanted to mention a couple of other things. You've seen a lot of highlights on social media of Malik Neighbors versus Deontay Banks, and, and that is a truly fun matchup to watch. Those two guys are intentionally matching up with each other during first team work. They're intentionally matching up with each other when the Giants do one-on-one -on -one cornerback versus wide receiver drills. And most of the highlights that you see online will be Neighbors beating Tay Banks. And Neighbors has beaten Tay Banks on a few occasions. There's no doubt about that. Although what I will say is on most of those occasions, Tay Banks was also in pretty good coverage. It's not like he got smoked. In a lot of those, like a deep ball that we saw on Friday, a go ball from neighbors to uh, from from Daniel Jones to neighbors, Tay Banks was in great position. The ball was a ter the ball was thrown exceptionally well, and neighbors made a terrific catch. And we've seen that a couple times in camp, but we've also seen Tay Banks break up a few passes intended for neighbors. Uh, one that that Jones tried to squeeze in the other day, a deep ball. Where, where Banks was in great coverage and the ball hit Banks in the helmet, you know, because there, there was, there was no way it was getting into, uh, into neighbors. So, so, so we're seeing, you know, both guys are winning some of those reps and that's what you want. Your number one receiver is making some plays and <clears throat> your number one cornerback is also making some plays and winning some of those reps. That's what's going to happen during the regular season. That's what should happen in training camp. And it's it's a good thing, I think, that that's what we're seeing in, in both guys winning some of those reps. It's just like the other day we saw, as, as great as Andrew Thomas is, we saw Brian Burns beat him on, on a, a pass rush rep with, with an inside move. I think Nick posted that uh, to his social media account, if you guys have seen that or I don't know if you guys have seen that or not, but that's supposed to happen. Brian Burns is a Pro Bowl caliber pass rusher. The Giants are paying him a lot of money. They traded away a lot to, to get Brian Burns. 
He's supposed to be able to beat guys the caliber of Andrew Thomas once in a while. Thomas will win the great majority of those reps. But if but if Brian Burns is going to be what the Giants need him to be, then we need to see him beat Andrew Thomas on occasion. We need to see Kayvon Thibodeau beat Andrew Thomas on occasion. There's That's not anything to be alarmed about with Andrew Thomas. That should happen every so often. So, so I was glad to see it. Um, you know, I don't want to see Andrew Thomas beaten. I don't want to see the quarterback pressured. But you want to see both sides win reps on occasion. So I'm fine with that. Um, just quickly before I go, I want to talk a little bit about Daniel Jones. Um, I've written this as well. We'll analyze every single day of practice. We'll obsess over every bad throw that Daniel Jones makes. And on Friday, he made, I think, four bad throws. He, he missed a wide open Wandale Robinson. He missed a wide open Daniel Bellinger over the middle. Um, he underthrew a deep ball that was across the field while he was rolling out to his right, designed play to throw back to the left, deep ball to neighbors, didn't get enough on it, and he gave Cordell Flott a chance to close on it and, and break the play up. <coughs> there was also a practice-ending interception on a pass that was intended for neighbors, intercepted by Dane Belton. And it looked from our vantage point like this was a situation where this was a play designed for Malik neighbors. And I think this, this will happen sometimes if you have a number one receiver and, and you try to force the ball into a number one receiver. Jones double clutched, looked like he started to throw it, thought better of it, and then decided to throw it anyway into, into heavy coverage. He probably should have come off neighbors and, and gone somewhere else. But the play was probably designed for neighbors, and, and Jones figured, you know, what the heck, I'll just throw it there anyway. Ended up getting picked off. You don't like to see it. Um, what you want Jones to do is, is realize, you know, that he's got to come off his primary target. But I think those things might happen sometimes when you've got that number one guy and you're and you're trying to to quote unquote feed the beast. Um, but what I wanted to say about Jones is look, he's been up and up and down in the first few practices that I saw. I think that's to be expected. First of all, it's early in training camp. And second of all, this is really Jones' first action. He did some, he did seven on seven in OTAs, but obviously there's no pass rush. He's still eight months off surgery for that, for that torn ACL. <clears throat> so by, by most standards, he's ahead of schedule. If he misses some throws, if he's not a hundred, if he's not perfectly sharp, then so be it. You know, he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not a perfect quarterback. I think that the noteworthy thing, the important thing, is that we see Jones out there every day taking every rep with no limitations, no limp, showing the ability to get out of the pocket, the Giants showing the willingness to use him in the designed run game. We've seen a bunch of quarterback draw kind of things where they're sending Jones up the middle. I'm not sure they'll do that in a padded practice in the next couple of days, but they're using him in the designed run game. He's getting out of the pocket. He's taking all the reps. He's out there every day taking a full workload. And here we are at the end of July with the Giants, you know, playing their first game on September 8th. And I think it's just I think it's good news. I think it's I think the important thing is Jones is going to be the number one quarterback, you know, in 2024 to start the season. You know, no matter how you guys feel about Jones, um, no matter how I feel about Jones, doesn't matter. That's not what we're what we're discussing here. He's going to be the guy. So 
the more he can practice, the more reps he gets with Malik neighbors, the more maybe they make mistakes now, get those out of the way, learn each other a little bit, learn what Jones can do, learn how neighbors will react to certain throws uh, that, that Jones makes. The more they work together, the more Jones works, period, throughout the summer, the better for the Giants in terms of their readiness to start the 2024 season. So I'm not concerned about the pass-to-pass -pass results. I'm concerned about Jones being able to handle the workload, being out there every day, moving around comfortably, not looking like he's uncomfortable or hesitant being on the field. So, so I see everything that Jones has done to this point as a positive. And I'm not saying that I think he's going to be an all pro quarterback. You know, Jones has limitations as an NFL quarterback. He's never going to be, you know, Patrick Mahomes or prime Aaron Rodgers or, you know, or, or one of those guys. But you know, the Giants showed in 2022 that they can find a way to play winning football with Jones as quarterback, and you'd like to see them get back to that. And I just think that, as I said, I just think that that each and every rep that he takes, each and every practice he comes through feeling good, each and every day, you know, that, that he looks healthy is a good thing for the Giants as they get ready for the 2024 season. All right, Giants fans, that's uh, that's the show for today. Thank you, as always, for listening. Please stay safe out there, take care of each other, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.